Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. I'm TV host and entertainment journalist Cognac Aquila Lane, and we are here at the Hans von D. Bovenkamp Gallery. And it's a very, very wonderful gallery. It's got beautiful sculptures and artwork, and we're here at a very special art show and reception to benefit the Ellen Hermanson Foundation. I'm here with the lady that really organized this and put it together. Introduce yourself to the camera. Uh, my name is Geraldine Lewandowski, and this was my concept to turn Hans von der Bovenkamp's studio into a gallery. So it's, it's the gallery at Hans von der Bovenkamp's studio. So we've uh, organized his sculptures, and then we've invited three different artists to also participate in showing their work. And as you've already heard, there's Beth O'Donnell, Christina Matai, and Anahi DeCanio. Um, so these will be probably seasonal events where we'll uh, select another group of artists and we'll uh, do a similar process. But um, the underlying um, theme is also to support uh, uh, Ellen Hermanson. Yes, well, various nonprofits. This one is dedicated to El Ellen Hermanson. The last one we did in, in um, August was uh, Maureen's Haven, and there'll be a, maybe a, another one. There'll be so we're looking to you know give back to the community and also show some wonderful art and bring people into a really unique creative environment where this is where art is created and it's also displayed now and people can participate by um, purchasing a book or something that uh, the uh, part of the uh, receipts of the book will be donated direct directly to Ellen Hermanson. Oh, fabulous! So uh, there's Not a, just the artwork, but the books yeah, as well. The books, they're, they're very reasonable: twenty dollars, ten dollars, and the proceeds will go to Ellen Hermanson. Also, a percentage of the artwork uh, that sells will go to Ellen Hermanson. So. You know, we're looking to generate some income for them to help. You know, them continue the really great cause. Uh, I myself has a was a benefactor of their services many years ago. Thank God, everything's good. You so, have breast cancer. Yes, twice. Yeah, me actually. too. Me yes. too. I had it only once, and I said, take them both off. Yeah. Yeah. Right no, away. I said, no fooling around. Yeah. You got to just get rid of them. But it's they ridiculous. Were, they were phenomenal uh, with the services that they provide. Um, you know, like emotional services, um, Edel O'Brien works for them, she's like a social worker and so many times you could just talk to her and she would help you through, you know, your anxiety of the time. And Can you tell us the story of how you found out that you had the breast cancer? Well, or the first time, the well, first time. It was basically through a mammogram and feeling a lump, you know, so. You uh, actually felt the lump. Yes. You know, and me, I didn't feel anything. Yeah, the second time was much harder to detect and I went through an horrible tests trying to find it. Some people were saying no, some people were saying yes you do and and then they finally found it and um, it was explained to me I'm like well how come you can't see it? We've done all these tests and uh, MRIs and everything and nothing's coming up but you're still looking and um, the surgeon explained it it's like uh, if you had a salt shaker and you spilled it so your my specific cancer was like tiny little grains oh, yeah I so yeah, they I heard said about that. you have to take the, you know like usually if there's a lump you can concentrate on that but they said if we tried to dig all this out there'd be nothing left anyways and you wouldn't even know if you got it all so 
you know, you had to take it all so off. So the first time was what, stage one breast cancer? Yeah, yeah. And, and that was just a little pee. See, now what happened with me was, yeah, same like you, a little pee, like a very yeah. small little thing. Yeah. So the doctor said to me, they, uh, I thought I was just going to have to, I told him just take both my breasts off, right, yeah. but I thought I was just going to be free and easy with just the two breasts being taken off. Yeah. But what happened was my onchio score, that's when they started testing for onchio scores, oh. and my onchio score was high. Oh. So I said, you know what? And the doctor wanted me to have chemotherapy, and oh. I didn't really want the chemotherapy. Yeah, I, I thought I was just going to need to take my breast off, but when he told me my onchio score was high, I says, oh no, I, I have to, I just have to get, I, I have to get rid of the breast, and I have to have the chemotherapy yeah. I didn't want the chemotherapy right, right. but I'm glad I did get rid of my breasts right, right. and I'm glad I did have the chemotherapy even though it was horrible yeah. you know I didn't have radiation I just right. because what they did was they put the implants in me right away right and yeah. that's why I couldn't get the radiation right, you know right. but the Alan Hermiston really did help you oh, all yes. along no I, I strongly support them and I'm I continue to support them because uh, I do a variety of art uh, exhibitions. When you first started this this whole thing, what you're doing right now, in August, you said? That was the first one here, but I've been doing an event called Art Groove at Ashwa Hall for more than 12 years. and it's it, Find me. I'd love to yes, come to more of your events. Uh, they're generally in the spring, and it's always a, a collection of artists. And, you know, in the past, I don't know, five or six years, I've started to pull in charities. I'm like, why not work? Uh, to help support you. I like that idea because not everybody can buy the art, but they could buy a book. Yeah, or you know, sometimes we have a selection of art that's priced under a certain level that's more affordable that people can buy, and then the. And it's still helping the cause. Absolutely, that's the, you know, and it helps the artist too. You know, it's going to be a win-win situation for everybody. So. Uh, so. To learn more about your events and who you are and what you're all about. Do you have a website? No, I don't really promote this specifically, but there is artgroove.us, uh, US. so it's artgroove.us that'll tell you about the upcoming Art Groove, and at some point I'll, I'll integrate this event in there. It's just I'm kind of doing it as I go along, and there's a lot to do. There's a lot of work in putting together a show like this. So. Congratulations with coordinating the show. It looks like you have a lot of people here today. Yes. Got Looks like you got a great here. turnout. Yes, we had last last time we had fabulous turnout. I'm expecting the same this time. I'm just hoping last uh, show every artist sold. That's what I'm going for, that every artist sells a piece this time too. Terrific. Let's do an air kiss. <laughs> Don't go away yet. We'll be back in a moment, darlings, with more interviews right here at this fabulous art exhibit, Pink Champagne Kisses. It's an art reception and art show, and it's to benefit the Ellen Hermanson Foundation. And I'm here with Beth O'Donnell, the artist. Now, you have a series of art that is being featured here today. Tell my audience the concept behind what you're showing against that wall. Well, what I'm, I am an encaustic painter, so that's with mixed media. It's a mixed media type painting with wax, melted wax, and oil paint, and sometimes photography, and sometimes there's no photography, but it's, um, it's all about, um, it's really where I live between New York City and the East End, so there are landscapes and seascapes from here, and then, of course, very cityscapes from the High Line, because I, uh, I lived on the High Line, next to the High Line, so there's a lot uh, from that. Um, pathway. Do you prefer the art as opposed to the photography or I like that you blend the two together. It's a very very interesting question. Yeah. I can't say hmm well nowadays I actually like the painting better because before I was using I wasn't a digital I, you know shooting with film so I had people that were you know that were um, making my prints for me it was a lot easier for me to obtain my prints and that kind of thing nowadays there's not too many people that are um, shooting with um, you know analog film and and so um, with the digital world I'm not really one that likes to sit at the computer so yeah, I, I know a lot of us have learned to become that you know I yeah. I do everything on the internet I have to because I I film this 
I edit. The, he's he only sits stands behind the camera and films for me, but I do everything else. And sometimes when he's not around, I do that too. Oh. But I film it, I edit it, I put it up on yeah. the internet, I well, write the story. Art. That's my yes. art. Yeah, yeah, and that's what you do. But um, for me, I just rather just throw paint on things and guess you know I get kind of messy. But uh, anyway. You like, I notice you like landscape. I like landscapes and seascapes and flowers, too. Um, one of mine over there is a um, peony. It's so oh, like one of my favorite flowers. Yeah, I, sh I uh, grew these peonies, and I shot them, and I printed them, and, and I've used them in many of my different uh, pieces of art with peonies. How fabulous. How many pieces are we looking at right Eleven. there? Eleven. Eleven. How long did it take you to get all that together? Well, you know, not all of it's brand new work, some of it's older work. Um, you know, it can take anywhere from a week to months to do a piece of art, just depending on... With the photography, it takes a lot longer. Why is I'm that? Because I'm dependent on other people. I see. Because I don't sit at the computer, I don't have a very large printer, and so I have to order the prints, and they come in, then I glue them on board, and then I cover them in wax, and then I paint them, and it's a, it's a process that so takes a while. Whereas with canvases, I can just start painting right away. Well, that's, yeah, you have more control that way. Now, tell my audience, how did you find out about this particular event? Um, Hans is a friend of mine, the sculptor, where, whose studio we're in. It's gorgeous, by the way. It is, yeah. What a piece of property. He is an amazing man. He, I hope that you, I'm sure you'll be able to interview him. He's great. And um, he and Gerilyn, who uh, you were just speaking with, um, invited me to uh, be a part of this um, exhibition along with Christine Matai, who is the artist that's sitting behind you. Um, she, she thought that I would be a good mix in with these uh, other two artists. So there's three artists showing with Hans. And you, I'm sure you're aware of the Ellen Hermanson Foundation. Yeah. Yes, I am. And I'm really proud that we're able to uh, contribute to that. So hopefully we'll have some nice some Buyers, yeah. It would be nice if you have some buyers come by and buy some of this work of art. And uh, I don't know if you have anybody in your family that had breast cancer or friends or family. I myself have... I'm a survivor almost 10 years. I was uh, 56 years old when I got breast cancer. And um, it's already like nine years or eight years since uh, I've had it. So I think I'm a survivor. Oh, yes, for sure. Well, I had colon cancer at 69. Wow. So I'm three years now. Yeah. How did, you, how did you find out you had the cancer? Colonoscopy. Yeah, my husband gets them like every, he has to get them like every six months. I, I don't have to get them every five years, but the breasts I get checked. In fact, I'm due to get checked again. And it's very important that we are all aware of our environment and that we get our checkups because who knows if it's hereditary, who knows if it's environmental. We really don't know. Even last year I had um, a lumpectomy because they, it, it wasn't cancerous yet but it could become, so they, they took a piece of flesh out. So I said, you know what, take them both off. I said, take them both off, make me bigger, I don't care. And that's what we did. And I'm glad I did what I did. And I've been involved with her, this organization for a long time now. Yeah. Now, tell my audience where we can go to find out more information about your work. Do you have a website? I have a website. I've had one for about 25 years. It's BethO'Donnell.com. And um, I live here in East Hampton, and I have an art studio that I, or is open to any visitors that want to come see me. So if you go to my website and you just send me a, a note, I can give you my address. Yeah. Fabulous. And I hope you are lucky and you get some, some good buyers today. And let's do an air kiss. Mwah. Mwah. We'll be back in a moment. More interviews. Keep watching. Pink Champagne Kisses. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Wellalane, and we are in Sagaponic, and that's, of course, in the Hamptons, and I'm here at the gallery, Hans von de Vo Vo Bovenkamp. That's the name of the gallery. I'm here with this fabulous artist, and she's going to introduce herself to the camera. Christine Maté. Christine, tell my audience about how you became involved in this exhibit today. 
Uh, I'm friend with Hans, first of all. Uh, we know each other for many years. And um, he invited me to be part of his show. Your work of art is amazing. I was looking at it behind me. Beautiful, beautiful pieces of art. Tell my audience, how many pieces do you have that we're looking at behind us? In here? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> eight pieces. Eight pieces. Can you tell us uh, what the concept of the artwork is? Well, it's a mix of my uh, series. I work in series. Um, I started with Light and Sea, the Horizon Lines, um, photography to begin with, uh, uh, going from form to formlessness, uh, very meditative pieces. They were actually my bestsellers for many years and then I got tired of photography and I got into painting. And uh, She was telling me that too. She actually likes to do the artwork more now than the photography. The lady I was just interviewing before, uh, oh, yeah. Beth O'Donnell, Beth O'Donnell. Yeah. Yeah. she said that, you know, sometimes with the uh, photography you have, because you're not a, an internet person or you're not into digital internet yet, you know, you have to rely on other people with, about being an artist and just putting paint on the canvas, yeah. you seem to have, everyone seems to have more control with that. But if you have to wait for other people, it's always like a problem. No, it's also um, being tactile, working more with your hands, hands on, you know, idea going through your arms into, onto the uh, canvas or paper, whatever you're doing. Photography is digital and once you took the picture, you give it to the lab and they deal with it. So this is more uh, exciting, actually. I think yeah. so, too. Yeah. I th Do you have a, a favorite piece that's up there behind us? My favorite piece, is, actually my latest, is over there. It is called um, uh, Forming Movement or How the Sun Was Done. Very last picture of the gold one. Gold one. I, I was looking at that. I love that. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I'm into a new series where I am so just uh, letting myself go and see through uh, movement what form comes out. So and this is what happened there, and I'm working on more. Uh, it's becoming a new series. Fascinating. Fascinating. The work is quite extraordinary. Thank you very much for liking it. Do you have the get? Do you what? What inspires you though when you do create these pieces? What inspires you? Is it like anything you see? Uh, nature mostly, because I uh, feel very I feel very uh, fortunate to live out here in East Hampton, Long Island, and uh, nature has always been. Uh, they uh, was my leader actually in what I'm doing. Yeah. Everyone tells me that. Everyone tells me that the the lighting here in the Hamptons yeah. and in Long Island is just magnificent for art. It just is. It, I mean, so beautiful. Yeah, but well, that's my inspiration. And then, of course, you have people who inspire you. And David, my man, <laughs> my uh, muse for a long time. Uh, with other work I did, and uh, so, but that's my latest here. And um, pieces of art are really, really gorgeous. Um, how did you find out about the Ellen Hermanson Foundation? Was it through this event today? Uh, yeah, actually, but then there are also the uh, the run, right? The, uh, the Ellen's run. The Ellen's yes. Run. Yeah, I never participated, but I thought it's a beautiful cause. It certainly is. And uh, Geraldine, and you know, she's very much into it, and she was actually also very instrumental. That she said, "You have to exhibit here with us." She's wonderful. She's fantastic, really. Do you have a website that we could go yes, to? Uh, Christine Mate. Spell it. Spell it. Okay. C H R I S S N M T I N E. M as in Mary, A T T H A I dot com. Fabulous. 
don't go away yet. We'll be back with more interviews coming up, darlings. Keep watching. Let's air kiss. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> Big champagne kisses. <laughs>
part of, of my mindset, you know, and where my soul was when I was creating the work. Just gorgeous. They really are. Is there a website that we could go there to? Is. The website is under my name, AnnaEDeCanio.com. Um, and I do exhibit pretty widely, so I'm, I'm out there. <laughs> Well, you do beautiful work, and I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to us here at Cognac's Corner like for thank a very you. good cause, yes. the Ellen Hermanson Foundation. Absolutely, absolutely. That. I'm, I'm thrilled about that, and thank you for being here and taking the time to do this. Much appreciated. Let's do it now. Don't go away yet. We'll be back in a moment with more interviews, darlings. Keep watching. Pink Champagne Kisses. a little bit and have invite other artists and uh, we did it last time and the weather was really good and we had uh, probably 300 some people here wow and we expect actually more today but you know, it's still early you know and so i mostly this studio i have for my smaller sculpture these are studies um, they are people, and it's called people of many colors. Fascinating. From Oregon. And uh, so these are people f from all colors around the whole world. And I've made these portraits. I've done about 30. And there is one big one hanging on the side of that bed. I'll get that later. I'm, gonna, I'm going to incorporate that into the interview. Okay. Oh, she had Fabulous. Uh, and uh, I just have been very blessed. Yeah, you have I'm still here. And I try to... Just do keep going, darling. Just keep going. Put one foot in front of the other, That's right? right? It's my last name. Gorgeous. For more interviews, keep watching, darlings. Pick champagne kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of me. dressed to impress one of a kind girl I was brought into this world wrapped up in pearls I love to mingle though my husband reminds me I'm not single I meet and greet both the famous and the elite I ride in limousines drinking the finest champagne wearing first dazzling diamond jewelry a girl can't complain I live in upscale life, dining in the finest restaurants, eating the best caviar for free. And no matter how much I eat cognac, ooh, ooh, I sip cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. I've been a Crybaby Productions, darlings.